Look at that face. Look at that lovely face. Oh, hello, baby. <laughs> You look pretty. I'm very grateful. Hello, book two. I'm, I'm very grateful for that kiss on the nose more often than usual. More than that. More so than usual. Uh, today, because a little earlier today, Frida had her bath. And I just naturally expect that her reaction to that will be the same as the reaction to so many other dogs I've had, which is morose resentment for hours or days. But, but not in her case. I mentioned this before. She seems... Uh, she's so smart that, that she seems more and more uh, aware of the fact that baths are only good. She doesn't particularly like the experience of being dunked in a mailbox and covered in water. But she's, I think, starting to realize that she feels better after a bath, both immediately and long term. She dries off in no time at all. No time at all. Uh, and because she's tiny, she's 10 pounds, because of that, I get to put her, I get to put one of those plastic mail tubs in the sink, put her in the mail tub, and the whole, the whole process is over in 10 minutes. Uh, I, and I think she's starting to, to associate, therefore, the bath with, with positive things. And that's great, because there's no resentment <laughs> afterwards. Uh, today, we got the whole, the whole nine yards. I, we did the whole works today. She got a bath. I did a little more trimming of her hair, especially on her belly, uh, and she got her flea medication. And, and she doesn't like any of that, but she put up with it like a trooper, so I gave her an extra treat. Uh, but anyway, our, our Penguin Classics have been wandering all over the map. In, uh, in recent videos, we have been mining a vein of 19th century American literature. And although today we are doing American literature, we're not doing the 19th century. We're... we're we're going back to Benjamin Franklin. This is the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin and other writings. Uh, a, a slim volume with a Norman Rockwell painting on the cover. I'm pretty sure that's the reason I got this, because of the Norman Rockwell painting. I'm a big fan of Norman Rockwell, and especially his historical paintings. Uh, and this is a volume that's edited by Kenneth Silverman, who wrote a really good biography of Edgar Allan Poe, and also the definitive biography of Cotton Mather, who's no easy figure to pin down on paper. Uh, and he does a very good job. His introduction and his notes in this volume are really good, but you don't really need much. An editor doesn't need to help you much with understanding Franklin. Franklin is a very clear and involving writer. Uh, the, that's true of the various essays and letters that are printed here, and it's also true especially of the autobiography, which is a seminal classic of American literature. Um, that I don't think is taught the way it once was. I'm pretty sure that students aren't, it used to be that grade students were, were given a, a bottlerized, a, a simplified illustrated version of the autobiography to read in excerpts, and that high school students absolutely could not avoid it. Uh, not that it's anything to avoid. It's actually very entertaining, uh, even though there are large chunks of it that are sheep dip. Uh, I don't think it has that kind of, of uh, currency anymore. I'm pretty sure that that Franklin is not taught on most reading lists that I know of anyway. Most, most young, especially American students that I know uh, have never read it, have never heard of it. Uh, it's very entertaining. It's not a long work. Obviously, you can see this thing could be five times as long with other writings by Franklin. Uh, Franklin is a seminal figure in American history, but uh, likewise difficult to pin down. And that, uh, that project has not helped any by his own writings, which are uh, notoriously embroidered. <laughs> the, the stuff that he's, where he's trying to tell the truth is notoriously embroidered. Uh, I love the autobiography, and this Penguin paperback is a perfect example of a kind of double bookkeeping that I do here in this little book room, where I have the Penguin wall, which is, is these, back, these backstop classics uh, that I go back to over and over again, uh, they're all in a kind of uniform style, and I like that. They make a library wall, and I like that. But there are quite a few Penguin Classics where uh, I will love the Penguin Classic, but I will also have another edition, at least one other edition, of that work. Moby Dick, The Jungle Books, uh, Last of the Mohicans, uh, The Diary of Samuel Pepys, uh, and on and on and on, where Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman, Seven Pillars of Wisdom, uh, where I will have... Uh, 
the Penguin Classic, and also the same work in a different edition somewhere else in the room. Uh, it's, of course, a joy for me when the Penguin Classic edition of a classic work is also that edition, is also the one that I want. Like, for instance, the, uh, the Royal Tyler translation of Tale of Genji, or the beautiful new Penguin Classic edition of Black Lamb and Grey Falcon by Rebecca West. Things like that, where I, the Penguin Classic is the version that I want. The Penguin Classic Deluxe Edition of the portable Dorothy Parker can't be beat. Uh, but this is, another, this is a case where that isn't true, because there is a, a version, an edition, of the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin that's out there somewhere. I don't, it's hazy for me. I don't have the details. I have seen it from time to time. I know I would spot it again. Uh, it's distantly remembered from my past. It's a hardcover. It's got color illustrations that are paintings, I believe, by Norman Rockwell. Uh, it might be a combination of the autobiography and Poor Richard's Almanac. Not really sure. Unless I'm remembering the, the, the full-color illustrated edition of Poor Richard's Almanac. That would be very disappointing. Well, I don't think I am, though. I think somewhere out there, there from mid-20th century, there is a, a, a lavishly illustrated edition of the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin that I is the version that I want in addition to this one. I would never get rid of this one. I'm very happy with it. Uh, and it, it definitely constitutes a recommend uh, for today. I don't know I don't know how many people are familiar with Franklin. Especially Americans are familiar with his autobiography. It used to be an absolute linchpin thing in American literary history, but I don't, especially since it's a new way of writing a bio, an autobiography, as you'd expect from Franklin. The more you know him, the less you expect him to do anything in any way that is, that is ordinary or that has been done before. And the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin is fascinatingly new in a large number of ways. Uh, but I don't think Americans are taught this book anymore, so they would have to find it on their own. If, if uh, you are an American, I strongly advise that you do that. <laughs> Even if you're not an American, you'll still know the name of Ben Franklin. Um, but anyway, that's your Penguin Classic for today. Uh, it's likely that we'll go back to the American 19th century tomorrow, <laughs> or whenever the next Daily Penguin happens. So I'll wrap this up for now, and I will see you then. Thank you, Book Two.